We close tonight with breaking news about a man we thought we'd never mention again on this show. A man who, for a bright, ugly moment, dominated cable news and then, like Sanjaya, receded into well deserved obscurity. But he is back for a moment, creepy porn lawyer. You'll remember he came on this show a couple of months ago and suggested that he was a feminist. We responded that he was, in fact, exploiting a troubled woman, Stormy Daniels, in order to transform himself from a sleazy lawyer into a presidential contender. And here's how he responded. Stormy Daniels is right now working in strip clubs and little towns on stage. People are throwing things at her. You're wearing a thousand dollar suit. Why is you, why are you not paying her? You've profited from Stormy Daniels. You've done tens of millions of dollars with the free media on the basis of your relationship with her. And she's working in strip clubs. You're exploiting her, and you know that. Why aren't you paying her some of what you're making? Sir, this is absurd. It's not I absurd. Not Those are the facts. Now, I've done a remarkable job for my client, and she'll be the first one to tell you that. Well, it turns out that his client will not be the first one to tell you that or to vouch for his services as a lawyer. Today, Stormy Daniels leveled several, several blockbuster allegations against Creepy Porn Lawyer. First, she said that he sued the president for defamation against her without telling her. That could be a crime. There's more, though. In a statement to the Daily Beast, Stormy Daniels says, quote, for months, I've asked him to give me accounting information about the fund my supporters so generously donated to for my safety and legal defense. He has repeatedly ignored those requests. Days ago, I demanded again repeatedly that he tell me how the money was being spent and how much was left. Instead of answering me without my permission or even my knowledge, the creepy porn lawyer, quote, launched another crowdfunding campaign to raise money on my behalf. I learned about it on Twitter. That is her statement. Well, it turns out the creepy porn lawyer is right about one thing. He has done a remarkable job for himself, the only client who matters. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Welcome to Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. So Michael Avenatti sued Trump without Stormy Daniels' permission. Now he is withholding money from her and also collecting more money on her behalf without telling him. And now if you Google his name, all these publications and broadcasters who were once heralding him and screaming his name from the hills as a hero are turning their backs against him. If you Google something else, however, Linda Starr's tour Women's March, you will also see a forgotten hero now being turned on by the people who once called her name out. It is Linda Sarsour, and if you spent five minutes looking into these people, then you probably would have figured it out. But now the media is just catching up to her and Tamika Mallory uh, and their anti-Semitic views in support of Louis Farrakhan. Now, for over a year now, I've been warning about people. I've been warning people about the views of Linda Sarsour and how troubling they truly are and how herself and the other leaders of the Women's March, just like many other organizations, they only stand for the causes they claim to fight for in name only. Here's a clip of me from August. The Women's March. Are they technically women marching? For the most part, yes. Do their leaders espouse objectively hateful and anti-woman sentiments? Also, yes. Tamika Mallory, friends with raging anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan, and would not back down from her support for him. Your best friend and mine, Linda Sarsour, who we all know wants to bring Sharia law to America. Her words, not mine. But if you asked me, bringing a law that requires women to dress certain ways and disobey their men, like not leaving the house without them and not showing their dreaded ankles to, to passers-by, I would say that's probably pretty much not pro-woman. I noticed they also took off Razmia Yusuf Odi from their website as one of their leaders. Could it be because she's a convicted terrorist? It was very simple, I thought. I looked up the leaders of the Women's March, and then I searched their names. Then you Google Razmia Ode, a convicted terrorist, Tamika Mallory, supporting Louis Farrakhan, and Linda Sarsour, also same thing, anti-Semitic, calls for Sharia law. Now, silly me for thinking, well, I guess if you're a terrorist or an anti-Semitic, you could still support women in some way. However, Ode was deported last year. Now, even though Mallory was questioned on her views for Farrakhan uh, somewhat recently, she did not back down, and now she and Sarsour are getting it again. Even Melissa Milano, the activist slash actress, has withdrawn her support, saying she won't go to any more marches or speeches until Linda Sarsour steps down. Now, Sarsour has actually come out and said we should have been faster and clearer about telling people that we are against anti-Semitism. I'm sorry, Linda, we must have missed that. 
while you were supporting anti-Semites and calling for Sharia law, which, if it does not surprise you, it shouldn't surprise you to hear that Jewish people are not treated very well under Sharia law. And then further on her statement, she tried to include LGB people into this statement somehow, probably for more added victim points, I assume. However, as you may or may not know, they are probably treated worse than Jewish people under Sharia law, so, so many conflicting ideologies there. Of course, what often start as heartfelt sentiments, these movements are quickly funded and then taken over by far-left ideologues, who now take the passion of their followers and their members and turn it into something that can only benefit them, which is a quest for power, political power, social power, and then trying to furthermore extend their arm into the American people on the behalf of their supporters who often, of course, just want power. Now I have tried to warn my friends and loved ones over the past couple of years of these organizations uh, not representing what their names suggest. Black Lives Matter, Women's March, March for Our Lives, which is owned by Women's March. I've changed a few minds and my hope is that I will also change yours.